book it in my calendar, mate, because this is how I need to roll these days because you do mate, not respect my time. I think her and Camille have been talking because that's mm. exactly what Camille says now. Mm. Like, is it in the calendar? Put it in the calendar. Mm. I don't oh. enjoy this chat. Oh. I, I thought it was going to be all in my favour. <laughs> oh. I thought I was going to throw your hair under the bus. G'day guys, we are back in the shed for another cracking episode of Level Up this afternoon. Uh, I'm really excited this afternoon because this is the first time we've actually had a husband and wife that works together in the building industry besides Camille and I on the podcast. So um, this afternoon we've got some awesome guests here for you. We've got, uh, Kim's been on before but we've got her husband Chris here. So they run CRA Construction, a uh, plastering company here in Brisbane that's um, I want to dive straight into it. Like, you guys are here to talk about how husbands and wife work together. Hi, Dwayne. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a privilege. You sound pleasure. nervous. You sound nervous. I'm, I'm very nervous. I don't know what he's going to throw me under the bus for. We'll see oh, how we go, hey? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Gloves are off. <laughs> so, look, it, it's, um, oh, look, I believe the construction industry would fall over if uh, wives and partners went on strike because, like, let's face it, most tradies and builders have a partner, a wife at home, all trying to juggle the business side of things as well as their own career. Um, you guys have obviously been very successful at it. You, you run the business together. Mm -hmm. um, although you do do it in separate offices with a soundproof wall between. We'll get to that later. Yes. <laughs> but um, <laughs> how, like, how do you guys make it work? Because I, I, I feel like this needs to be spoken about because obviously it's not all roses. No, you, I, I think you have to 100% be on the same page. So, um, like, starting from the bare bottom, you have to be, like, we write our goals together. We have, we say, what's our end goal? What do we want to do? How are we going to get there? How are we going to make this happen? And it makes us have a reality check every time we're struggling or we're fighting or, you know, whatever it might be, we go, all right, we're doing this because... We want to get here or do this or whatever it might be, you know. It, it, it brings you back down to earth again and goes, okay, it, it's worth it, right? Yeah. Um, but it's, it's not easy. It's, um, it's most <laughs> definitely something that we have learned to communicate openly with, with everything. Um, the, the moment that you start getting frustrated with one another, if you build that up and then you bring it into your home life as well, and then it goes into the workplace. It's not just um, it's not just yourself that's having to deal with it. It's your staff. It's your trades. It's the kids. Your like, kids. Everything. Yeah. Like it just it's a snowball effect, right? Yeah. So, I feel there's definitely a few times where Camille and I have not, not switched off, and like we. Do you guys have the office at home or? Yeah? No, we're out of the office now. Yeah. We'll tell you about that later, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like being able to. D like leave it at work mm. so that when you get home you're mm. the dad you're the mum and mm. the family does it seeing without do you really what? think that happens <laughs> 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 asking the hard questions here <laughs> yeah like well, well how, how do you deal with those situations no we definitely bring it home every now and then yeah but it's just i like your honesty mate <laughs> i i feel we have it out when we need to have it out yeah, yeah. and don't as soon as we've had it out it's done done yeah. yeah we move on it's yeah. when you've had a real stressful month and you don't talk about it and don't battle it out with mm. whoever's right or wrong there's always someone who's right and someone who's wrong yeah mm. if you don't have that argument i reckon that's when we come unstuck it's learning yeah. to Which, choose your battles like you can either dig your heels in the ground because you're so stubborn or you can go i am actually bloody wrong let's just shut up and get on with it, right? Like, yeah, if you want to be stubborn, that's fine, but it's not going to get you anywhere. It's, um, you know, we, and I am, I am a stubborn Dutch woman, so I'm happy to, you know, admit this, but it's something that um, I've, I've had to learn my, in myself to choose my battles. Yeah. Like, it, what's It's a tricky point? one, isn't it? Because, like, I know Camille and I have got a lot better in business, the more work we have done on ourselves absolutely like it's, um and i don't even just me being able to take responsibility for things now and not uh like 
I'm sure you two are no different. I think every, I, I think it, mat- it doesn't matter whether it's a marriage, a partnership, a business partnership, like whatever. You've got to be able to understand that the other person sees things differently, mm. has a different understanding of a certain situation, whatever, mm. and work through it. And I agree with what you said, Chris. Like it's it's super important that you you have smaller battles along the way rather than just letting everything keep yeah. if you, if growing. It, Builds up. That's when you. You're done. You're in big trouble. Yeah, yeah, very unhappy. <laughs> or and then you get the trouble. dog ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, screaming much occurs. Yeah. No, we try not to scream too much. I was saying to um, one of our staff today that uh, she's working from home, and she said, "Oh, you know, here's my dog at home on the couch snoring next to me. He's very disruptive." I'm like, "It's probably better than listening to Chris and I bicker all day. <laughs> like, it's, you know, <laughs> enjoy the peace while you got it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, we don't bicker, but certainly, like." There's some stomps down the stairs and there's some, oh, for fuck's sake, you know, oh, yeah. whatever it might be. Like, it's, it's very, um, yeah, we... We got very specific roles. Like, yeah, I don't, when I go against her role, which is growing the business and then all the bookkeeping and all the growth and everything else, the accounting, if I second guess that, that's You're like I've, I, I can have my two cents and opinion and but that's her overall picture where she's got the big picture of it and mm. then similar so, on site and dealing with the guys like we've separated it and yeah. then once we start very very clear roles so yeah. you run you run the sites uh run the quoting and the boys I've sort of stepped away from been on site as much which i think i'm going to go back to once i get help with quoting we so um we've defined our more. roles as the business has grown so um we now have a residential supervisor so he deals with all the nitty-gritty and running the jobs and he's now scheduling the jobs which we were previously and only since i was here last you know so um we now have a commercial supervisor he's running the commercial sites and we purely trust these guys, solely trust these guys to, they know what they're doing and we've had to learn to go, we trust you, do you and do it well. We step in when we need to. Yeah. Um, if they're, someone's having, you know, disagreements or someone's not showing up to site or, um, you know, if we have to step in on a HR level or on a just a general, as the owner of the business, I expect this from you. That's yeah. when we step in. But we're very, very much so had to, um, create these well give everyone their job roles and and trust them and this yep. is the process it's only from hiring those new guys that has made yeah. me and Kim come good again like <laughs> it, we were in the trenches for yeah fucking three years I reckon yeah. just yeah trying to yeah stay up but it um it's like it's I, I think this is important to talk about because so many people um, I definitely believe Everyone looks at our industry, whether it's a builder or a trade, and sees what they do on site. Mm. Yeah. And they have no idea what mm. has to happen behind the scenes, whether it's a full build or, or trades like yourselves. Mm. There is a fuckload of ordering, quoting, mm. takeoffs, accounting, like mm. just running the business, especially mm. like what have you guys got now? 16, 18, 20 uh, guys? 22, I think, yeah. So we. Um, we're constantly growing and evolving and we learn so much so we um and we're we're the first to admit that we are not not we're not know-it-alls we we are openly learning every day from everything so it's um yeah it's one of those that we we adjust our business a lot to suit so you know my job role i um today i met with our accountant our marketing team our solicitor our um from everyone else's, um, like, these are our key people and this is my job role to make these decisions and to delegate and to this is what needs to happen. So it's something that um, I make a decision on something and come up with an idea and then I go to Chris and say, hey, look, this is what I want to do. And he'll literally just go, yep, and I walk away and implement it. Yeah. Um, so on many, many, many different levels. So, and it's the same as he. Hey, such and such is... Um, this is what's happening on site. If it's on a HR, HR level or something where I need to go and support that team member, then that's my job. 
um, and I step in and I help that staff member. Yeah. Um, it's it's yeah. really important defining roles, isn't it? Mm, like one mm. of the first things, well, during the, we do an onboarding call with um, the builders when they come to Live Life Build and like one of the things I talk through with them is like tracking everything they're doing mm. and like quite often it's husband and wife team. So um, like, and I say I do it for three months. Like you need to track everything you're doing and like that could be even every phone call you're doing. Lots mm. of people think it's only a phone call, but what, is it a phone call for HR? Is it a phone call for uh, meeting a new designer architect? Is it a delivery? Like mm. even phone calls go into certain roles. Mm. Yeah, um, it's underrated that back end of the business. Yeah, like, like you don't, if you don't know what your role is in a business, it's very hard to not piss people off. Absolutely. Because you're both, like, both sides are trying to do a bit of each other's yeah. work. And, you're, and that's where we were, um, what, six, nine months ago? So we hired a, our residential supervisor and he literally said to us, guys, there's too many chiefs. Like, there's too many people trying to do yeah. the same job, yeah. have too many... Dis- Stop uh, fucking calling the boys. <laughs> let me do my job and you guys fucking yeah. get back on the computer is and pretty much what he said. Yeah, I, like, it's... We, we take that on board and we, we have, like... But you're never going to know until you go through what not to do or be told or educated on it. Um, like, it's something that you just have to go... Um, and especially learn to trust. Like, we... We were very much so micromanaging because we um, had done that role for so long that we didn't know how to offload that component. Mm. And we've had to be, you know, he really pulled us on our shit and good on him. Like, yeah. because now his role is his defined role. Yeah. So. And has that helped you guys know more about the, like your roles that you play in the business? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah Absolutely. It's, yeah, given us time to actually concentrate on the business. Yeah. Yeah. Like, half Kim's role, three years ago, if you told me all the shit she was doing, I'd be like, what the fuck are we doing that for? Like, (laughs) HR and, like, keeping up to standards and, like, all the back-end stuff. I'm like... We're at a talk. I understand now why we're... Yeah. Yeah, as we're growing, I'm like, holy crap, we need all this shit. But like mm. literally a week ago, we're at a talk, someone talking about HR and um, everything she rattled off, bar maybe 1% of it, we, we, we have implemented, right? And I take that 1% and I'll implement that in my business. But him, like two years ago, he, he's that attitude. And this mm. is what, um, as, a, as a team, like I have to educate him on why we need this and then I have to stand my ground and... And then he finally comes to and goes, yeah, okay, I accept that. The, like this it's... is where the husband and wife team, I think, works. Because, mm. yeah. like, most guys are running it themselves and don't exactly ask or give the wife the option of having that 100%, like, this is my role, this is what you should do. Like, Well, you're a, you're a, like, you're a plasterer, you're a brickie, you're, you're a carpenter. Like, you're mm. not... Like, yeah. when you start your trade no one tells you all the business shit mm. yeah like, mm, it's horrendous you uh, you think your job is on site throwing sheets and setting and mm. sanding and uh, like yeah it's just mm. it it um it absolutely amazes me knowing what i know now how much and and i think there's so many people in our industry that are on site doing the site works that just like i, I know there's guys in our team that just think camille and Sharon and me just sit in the office twiddling our thumbs. Oh, yeah. that's all like, of our team. <laughs> like, they have no idea. Um, sipping on beers you, and so yeah. they, We've got a warehouse um, now and they come up the top of the stairs <laughs> and they see us working. You see like they're, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, oh, they, oh, they're doing something. They're not just drinking beer. <laughs> yeah, well, like in this day and age with, with the amount of HR and workplace health and safety and just all the paperwork yeah. that goes with it. Yeah. Um, whether it's electronic or not, like it's still paperwork. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's, um, I I'm firmly believe like it's there's more work happens off site than what actually happens on site. But like mm-hmm. if you added up Definitely. the hours you spend on a job, I, I would guarantee you like the hours would be almost identical off site to on site. Yeah, yeah. and like, the reality is we've lost a few team members this year because they didn't believe that we were busy. Yeah. Like they they assumed that we were 
you know, earning so much money and we're, um, you know, just living this high life and yeah. got all this time on our hands. Going and out for lunch every day, having yep. breakfast at the coffee shop. Yep. Yeah. And, and we've it's literally had to say, you. like, <laughs> you don't believe us, go see for yourself. Mm. And then when you are not happy, come come back and let's talk. Yeah. But most people won't believe until they experience it and then go through these trenches and they either come out the other end and educate themselves on it or they sink. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, be a sole trader, they say. It's, yeah, fun. <laughs> oh, look, it definitely is. I think you guys are on the right track. You're obviously doing well to employ 20-odd people, so that's yeah. no small feat. Like, that's, it's not um, easy. Uh, like, did you ever imagine you'd be employing 20 people when you were starting your apprenticeship or getting into the trade no nah, always wanted to get off the tools when i started sanding as a plasterer that's for damn sure <laughs> i'm like i gotta get rid of this shit yeah but that was about as far as it went just yeah. get off the tools and figure something out yeah. yeah and then he's met me and i'm like right we're gonna buy all these houses and we're gonna make all this money and i don't know how we're gonna do it <laughs> and we're like, oh okay let's try and figure that one out <laughs> <laughs> Not happening yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, well, it's good. Uh, you mentioned before we started recording, Kim, that you you guys see a coach. Yeah, absolutely. A yeah, and, so um, we have many facets. We um, we have a business mentor, and she is like um, half mentor, business mentor, half marriage counsellor. Um, <laughs> no, she pretty much tells Kim when she's wrong, which is what I need. <laughs> she's on my side, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> but she also educates Chris. Yeah. in in what I'm trying to get across. So, um, and then we go to um, Coraggio. I don't know if you've heard it, but it's a, um, essentially, um, they bring a whole heap of business owners together and we sit in a boardroom of 10 to 12 different other business owners and we go through each other's profit and loss and balance sheets and talk about our wins, our challenges, our whatever it might be. And we just get another perspective from other business owners. Um, and that as a, we've just even budgeting and you know you're always on about your numbers and this is where we've had to really we've learnt to nitty gritty get into it um we uh yeah coraggio is good we we're fighting over a budget for like three years making mm. one mm. it's like nah we don't need to put that in no nah, like work, need work to put budget in or overhead yeah. budget or y yeah, yeah. Every, yeah, everything turnover yeah. every everything and yeah what you're making what you're to grow what your projection's going to be. Yeah. And then this place was like, nah, fucking show us the budget in two weeks or get, <laughs> it was pretty much get out. It's yeah. like yeah. everyone's got to do it, show it in front of everyone. We're like, fuck. And then you show them a budget. You're like, oh, <laughs> we're not doing as well as we thought. Yeah. We need to figure something out. Oh, yeah. no, one, no one, most businesses aren't. Like they, uh, it's generally a bit of a rude shock when mm. you, yeah. well, some people, most people take it as a shock. A lot of people think it like, they just see it as instantly like, holy fuck, that's why I've got no cash flow. Absolutely. And it's like a kick up the ass, right? Eh? We've got to sort this shit out. Even yeah. recently, just putting aside um, all of our money f for staff or all their accrued leave. Like I've never done that. I've just not winged it, but I've always just had savings, Yeah. you know, and now I've got multiple accounts for multiple reasons. It's, um, Profit and first. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So coming into Christmas, my stress that my staff will be paid. There's no stress there. Like it's, I, I'm good. Um, as long as, you know, more builders pay us on time, <clears throat> please. Um, it's something that, yeah, you yeah. know, it's, I, I know that as long as they're paid, that's what all I care about. I will deal with the rest later. Yeah. So it's... Um, and this is a... I'm just going to throw something out there because I... Um, it sounds like what you've been working through or maybe I might teach you something, but um, I think I'll definitely teach the listeners a lot. But when you're paying someone... so this is And this is the other thing that guys on site just don't understand. But if you're paying someone on, on wages or salary or whatever, like on a, on a proper setup where they get holidays, sick days, all those types of things. So if you... If, well, the example enough off the top of my head. So if you've got someone that you're paying roughly around $45 an hour on site, by the time you add in all the holiday pay and sick day and leave loading and those types of, like everything that they have to get. So you add up that, like basically there's eight weeks a year 
that they could possibly not work for that you have to pay for. So, and I, I'm sure this will be a massive eye opener for a lot of people, but if you, if you think that they're costing you 45 an hour, by the time you add on the cost for that eight weeks, the super, the work cover, all those other things, yeah. you actually need to be charging them out at a minimum of $76 an hour. Mm. Mm. Even our cars we account for, our cars, our fuel, um, like the whole cost of the car, um, we, we work it right back. Um, absolutely. It's, it's very hard to like educate your workers. That Well, I don't think they, they want to be educated. No, like, they, they don't. They just, like, I know for a fact, like if you sell, if there's a guy on site that you're paying 45 bucks an hour mm. and he hears or thinks that you're, so straight away, if I'm charged, if I'm, if I've got someone in my team that I'm paying $45 an hour on a salary, I have to, so obviously if they're costing me $76 an hour, I need to be charging them out at at least $95 an hour because I've, I've still got to make the money to be able to pay the cost to have them. Mm. So they hear that you're charging them out at $95 an hour, mm. they yeah. crack the shits and expect more money. Mm. But they don't understand that. It's costing me as a business an extra, thir- and that's on forty-five an hour. Obviously, it gets higher, but mm. it's costing physically costing me an extra mm. thirty dollars an hour mm. to have them. Mm. And yep. so many builders and traders will be listening to this, yep. and hopefully, it's a light bulb moment mm. because I know there's heaps of trades out there that are paying guys fifty-five dollars an hour mm-hmm. and charging them out at seventy-five dollars an hour. Mm-hmm. They're actually losing money. Correct. For every hour that person works, mm-hmm. they think they're picking up. 25 bucks an hour. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. actually losing, losing probably money. $25 an yeah. hour. And we, we honestly, we've, um, we've gone through, we, we've always had a, a gist of that, but it wasn't until we worked it out maybe a year or two ago, but we genuinely, we lost a lot of money. Mm. And, and even hourly rate, we've had to up our hourly rate. Um, and it's not very often we'll do time and materials, but certainly there's many builders out there that that's how they want to work and we accept that but we're not willing to work for free or lose money to be on your site. But a lot of builders don't understand that either. No. Like you you no. as a subby will be telling builders that, hey, I've got to charge my guys at 95 or Correct. whatever it is an hour. Yeah. Yeah. And but, they, they, but, will, they will be thinking, oh, you're only paying them 45. And they, they have no understanding either. Correct. That, mm. like, There's still a crap load of builders, trades, everyone just paying straight ABM. Yeah. Super. Like that's mm. why yeah. it's, they're like, ah, we just need to charge 70 an hour because this guy's charging. Yeah, yeah. our yeah. issue is our competition. Most are uh, sole <clears throat> traders or they um, they are on ABN. Someone's on ABN along the line. Well, um, for 10 years you're talking and like there's no reason that guy can't turn around. We even had an insurance his... builder turn around to us, a big builder, and demanded invoices and it was one job we absolutely bent over backwards for. We slotted them in and um, we just made it work for them. And then when they got the bill, they reneged on everything and went, what? I'm like, I'm sorry, but this is, these are our costs. And, and we've had to just purely to, you know, you can keep going three, four months down the track and not get paid. Or you can, like, we've, we've just, like, we've been put in a position where we have, we're essentially gone on a job. We've lost money now and we, we just have to move on and we won't ever work for that builder again. Like yeah. it, so, did you have an uh, like? Did you have an agreed hourly rate with them? We've like done what? four jobs from before. More, more than that. He's, yeah. He's yeah. just yeah. His supervisor. The insurance game changed quickly, um, and they had to prove. They went back to the old rates. You know how it all went gangbuster, and like yeah, we could have gone on legally and all that shit because we'd done four jobs for the same rate. <laughs> like previously but so was it all was it on like did you have it on paper what the agreed rates were yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. this builder we had an agreement with yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it was just yeah are we going to go three months without money or yeah are we going to negotiate yeah, it would have yeah. gone continued on for six nine months if we went yeah well that's the other really shit part of our industry like there, there's so many builders and operators out there that just know that trades get in situations where they need the cash flow and they know yeah. that they can screw them over because eventually they're going to give in and want some money rather than no money yeah and the reality is you don't know until you work for them like there might be that's not even word of mouth on the street you know yeah. like it's um one 
yeah, so we, we literally have to go through, work for a builder, and then two months down the track or whatever it might be, I'm saying, hey, guys, I still haven't been paid. Um, and then I realise, okay, these aren't who they say yeah. they are. So it, it's a reality and it, it's not to down, well, it's not to, you know, put a bad word on our industry. It's more so that this is our reality. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's why we're here. That's why we're doing this and talking about yeah. shit because we want to we wanna level it all up. Yeah, but, um, exactly. It's, yeah. it's hard on everybody. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, one of our worst ones would have been we a builder almost got catfish like you know that sushi train <laughs> guy oh, yeah. like this random worker stole his abn everything he'd done this his license everything qbcc license and this is where the husband and wife team comes in and i'm like yeah yeah we can do this job fuck he sounds like a great bloke and yeah he's We've I've gone, uh, have we got an agreement? Have we got, have we done a history search on them? Have we done a X, Y, Z? And Chris like, we're well, sweet. And for now, please continue the yeah. conversation. There you <laughs> Anyway, did the job and then I get a call. I'm like, what the fuck? We haven't been paid. One of my guys still had the key. He went to the site. And then I get a call from someone I've never even heard of. What what the fuck are you guys doing on site? Who are you? I'm like, who are you? Like, are you the builder? Can we get paid? And he's like, no, nah, I'm the client. This guy's stolen money, run away to New Zealand and used another builder's ABN. And yeah, he's stuffed everyone. So that, that was my lesson about uh, listening to... <laughs> Kim Meanwhile, about. we've paid our suppliers, we've paid our staff, we've paid our, and we're now fighting them. So to get try and even attempt to get our money back, we have to go to the guy that's overseas, the um, the client, the builder. Um, the guy's ABN got stolen. He's got nothing to do with it. And just bring it's them like, into one big court case in hope that someone will pay our bill. And this, but this is because you didn't get anything in writing or yeah. doing license. That's correct. Yeah. Which I've learned that lesson. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's this, why um, we got a wall a... between us now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's look. That's a huge lesson for anyone that's listening. And look, I'm I'm not perfect. I definitely did that back in the day as well. Like you, you think that you can trust people and uh, do what you do, but it's um, the Aussie way. It's the handshake agreement. Yeah. It's um. Yeah. It's how. It's a natural thing. You believe someone's word. Yeah. Um, but the reality is that it's unfortunately not everyone does the right thing. So what's what's your checks? What do you like anybody that's taken on work, like a subby to a builder, what's your checks? What should yeah, they be doing? So we'll do a QBCC search on them and we'll go through their history if they have any judgments, any um, underpaid, so any suspended accounts, obviously cancelled accounts. Um, we do um a general Google search because that shows up court cases, that shows um, anything of that sort. And then, yeah, it's sort of if we're umming and ahhing, we, oh, our um, builder's insurance, I'll add them onto my builder's insurance. If they agree to it, then, um, then okay, we're, we're covered. That's a yeah. good start. If they're not willing to cover them, then that's obviously a red flag. And our builder's insurer can also, um, insurance, can also do a, a search on them, a further search. So if others uh, have put in a claim against them, then that's obviously a, um, a red flag as well. So do you take out insurance on builders not paying you? Yeah, 100%. We've only recently done that. Yeah. yeah. Because of That would be sushi fucking man. expensive, wouldn't it? That is approximately two and a half grand a month. Thank you very much. Um, and that is to get us coverage of um, about 1.3 mil, which... At the moment, I think I have uh, 25 builders I've insured against, um, and that's for contracts only over 20,000. So um, it's not in our interest to put in a claim for minimal. We'll obviously um, yeah. seek our own way with that it's legally. More, it's more so now we're doing commercial. It's like yep. if yep. Like, and that builder goes bust, we're f fucked. Yeah, much. You so. don't have to say so many Fs, you know. So. <laughs> um, You're it's... right, mate. Go for luck. Go for God. <laughs> they um, have told what to do enough already, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, like, yeah, it, there's so many parts of our industry that need to be improved. Yeah. But like you said, mate, like, I, I know I wouldn't 
have learnt what I learnt without my wife coming into the business. Like you're you're a tradie. Like you just want to go to work and yeah, work with the boys all day and listen to tunes and bloody hopefully get paid at the end of the job. But it's it's reality is it is not that simple, is it? Yeah, and where our ethics are insanely <clears throat> high, we've come from a previous business partner who spent all the business money and then wouldn't pay wages or subbies, um, who we obviously said goodbye to, but we started this business wholeheartedly going, we'll do it right, we'll do it well, we will learn from our mistakes and take control. Yeah. And we just, we continue to follow through. If we need to put in um, personal money, we'll put in personal money. We haven't had to actually yet, which is amazing, but it's something that we will always put them first because yeah. they need to pay for their families. Yeah. I'm banned from uh, taking builders' phone calls and going, we can start a job tomorrow. Oh, that, man. That, that's how we nip We literally <laughs> drop everything and then all of a sudden we've got a, a truck coming with a delivery and then for a builder we've never heard of or met or spoken to. Or, uh, but and they're good blokes on the phone and yeah, they're in need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is definitely a few <laughs> arguments I've had over this. It's this is... what the... Anyway. Anyways. So that's where we got half our builders to begin with. So just and saying bless yes. their cotton <laughs> yeah. socks. I love yeah. them, yeah. but uh, only if they pay their bills. <laughs> so what, what's, besides the estimating and bringing in dodgy builders, what's, what's your role? <laughs> My role, apart from dodgy builders, <laughs> may, man, it's killing me. I'm doing mostly estimating at the moment and then go to site. Like, man, if you go to two sites quoting three sites, there's – four hours of your day gone yeah. and yeah. then you've got to come back to the office and write it all up. So yeah. it's gone to shit a bit. So how I, do you, I'm curious to know, how do you, um, I guess, manage or try to avoid, like we have a process to try and get rid of tire kickers, like clients wasting our time. Yeah. How can you like I've gone avoid the builders opposite. really wasting your time? I've gone the opposite way. Like we've got, I've got rates for every, everything. Like a whole house would only take. But it's all ten, time. Ten like if you got builders, if you got thirty builders all just ring, constantly ringing you. Like, do you only price work for regular builders, or are you no. always? No, no, because we're always trying to grow, and then there's builders that don't. We don't want to work for because they haven't. And they take so long to pay, so we're like, we're going to have to keep getting new builders to sift out. Yeah. So, so we're we've constantly. Had a, we've had a big change recently where we've um, six months ago we took on our we went we reintroduced ourselves back to commercial. We had a four year break from it. This was the previous business that we had, and we very much so said starting CRA we wanted a um, low risk, which is residential to, in our minds. Um, and now we've re-entered um, with commercial. Yeah. So, and it's something that re-entering commercial, once you have your team there, you obviously want to keep them going. So we, this is where Chris has come into it in terms of quoting a hell of a lot more. He's re, he's quoting to commercial projects yeah. and I, I need out. help in there. So we've, the reason we grew so fast was because no other plus. There wasn't many plasters by like your A1s and EANSs that priced off plan at tender time when they know it's like a waste of time. The builder's trying to win the job but hasn't won it. So most yeah. plasterers are like, ah, oh, fuck that. We don't need that. But we've we've always priced everything. Is where like, even now, builder's are like, oh, I'm only tendering, but we're like, oh. Who cares? Most, like, I can smash a quote out. And yeah. Most times by the time it comes to them being on site and then they have us quote, they're like, holy crap, that is so far over our budget. And we're like, well, this is why you have us quote at tender time. So we may not win that job, but we will certainly start quoting for them. And then when it comes to six months or a year down the track, when they're ready to start on site, we win the project. Yeah. So, I, I think we've got to keep doing it i'd love the pack process for plasterers that, that would be lovely <laughs> well you should start. be looking for pack builders like we like if a builder and look i think commercial builders should be doing it as well like there's <clears throat> it's costing all of our clients too much money like mm. a, 
the um, like I won't know names, but like one of our largest suppliers um, spends over four million dollars a year estimating, mm. and they only win eighteen to twenty five percent of the jobs they for us. Yeah, mm. so. We're, we're all paying for that $4 million. We're, like we're looking to hire an estimator yeah. because he's so overwhelmed. Um, so that'll be, they won't be full-time, but certainly part-time. I need um, to get out of the office too close yeah. to, the estimator can go in my room. Oh, come <laughs> and on I now. can run away from Kim. Come on now. <laughs> come go on, mate. Back we're, on here to, we're here to uh, <laughs> solve the industry's problem and get husband and wife working happily together. Are we here for marriage counselling? I thought that's what <laughs> yeah. we're here for. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've got the gloves off. I'm ready. <laughs> the, um, like, yeah, having finding builders that actually have processes that get rid of the or attract the right types of clients. Um, like all of our trades love it because they they know if they get a set of drawings from us, there's a 95 percent chance the job's going to happen. Yeah. Because um, yeah, our, our like you think of every builder sending plans to multiple trades. Like especially a tendering scenario, like you, mm. uh, ten, you might have. Well, I know scenarios where there's like fourteen builders tendering on the yeah. one commercial job, mm. and then each of those builders is probably sending out to multiple trades. Yeah, like all that wasted time. Yeah, yeah. we like, often get the same job to quote <laughs> from different builders. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's just a reality. We we just submit the same price. Like it, it is what it is. We're not. We're, here to... We've definitely yeah started pricing jobs for a few builders that go through your pack process, and I'm like, yeah. this is sweet. You can. Well, you know, you're going like, to get the work. Yeah, good good work, and they're actually thinking about the job, which is yeah. oh, awesome. Oh, it's so organised. And they listen to you. Yeah, like, listening to your trades. Like we got top top end builders that are like talk about. We talk about level five and that, and uh, maybe you should approach like, oh no, we don't want to pay for this. Maybe you should approach it with a client before it, mm. like just suggest. Uh, there's a price to do this one wall under a skylight. Oh no, we're not going to do that. I'm like, whatever, man. And then a year later, you're like, ah, oh, we're going to defect that. I'm like, Bro, you had your chance. Mm. Like yeah. you chose not. You didn't listen to us. But yeah, all we, yeah, the guys that are going through. The, the pack process is quite good. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, well, you got to. Um, that's all part of it. You got to. Everyone's got to work as a team to educate. Yeah. Everybody, and that's um, like a lot of builders need educating as well. Like I didn't. I never knew about level five until we started doing bigger homes and more glazing and light reflection off lower roofs and pools mm. and yeah, all those types of things. Like you got to learn. Mm. Um, and yeah, without having good trades that are happy to put in the time and educate you on this sort of stuff you you're always going to be doing shit the wrong way mm. yeah or, or, you, or you're missing out on better options mm. i 100 percent compliment the, the pack process like and all the builders that you've trained they are so organized they are they schedule ahead of time they pay their bills on time every single one of them like it's yeah. phenomenal who, it, are, who are they Oh, can I tell you? <laughs> nah. <laughs> they, um, nah, well, well, because we... There's, uh, look, they know, and I'm sure <clears throat> they're listening. <laughs> we've, definitely, uh, we've definitely got a lot that have been trained now, but we also have a lot that think they're doing it that have never come through our course. Ah. Uh, so it's, no, um, it's an interesting those have been one. formally trained. I see them on your feeds. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so what, what, other, like, what other advice have you got for husbands and wives or partners working together, like? Don't, our first office or room was a walk-in room with a desk that was oh, our 1,200 first with working two side by side. Screens. So we started the business on our kitchen table. We moved house and we got a small, very small um, two metre by two metre office that we both sat side by side. Two metre by two metre. Oh, oh man, yeah. It was, it was a walk-in room. It was crazy. Yeah. With and a, that's why we changed house. We're like, oh, we got an office. Yeah. <laughs> we were so excited with a sliding door. So we were like, we've got work-life balance. This is the best. And then, um, yeah, that became very, very close. So uh, a house came up <laughs> for sale three doors up the road. So we bought that, moved in, and that had a rumpus room. But... We still took the same desks and put them side by side and thought it'd be a better situation. And then by the end of it, like he's going, <laughs> eating his lunch, he's <laughs> clicking his pen, he's, he's uh, you know, picking his boogies. And I'm like, are you serious? 
Uh, like, mate, what, what can I say or, about you? <laughs> or he talks on the phone on speaker, and so when he's talking, I literally read the same sentence ten times. So um, yeah, we. Uh, oh, it sounds just like me and Camille. <laughs> <laughs> Does my head in. So it was the best thing ever. So we, um, yeah, we bought a little warehouse in Jibung and we've put two offices that um, has soundproof board, it's soundproof insulation. The uh, Except we moved in and realised that we should have put carpet down because that's the sound still getting... Oh, we've got solid core doors. Um, but, uh, yeah, the sound... Any, anything to block it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> block me out in my chewing, supposedly. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, get, I, used, I used to get that as well. Like, stop your snorting, stop your oh. snorting. No. Oh. Uh, it was breathing not so long ago. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Trying no. to stop that. No good. It's, I'm no working good. on it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, move on. So now it's all uh, it's it's all working out. Now you have got separate offices. You got the... separate offices. We have an administrator working <laughs> with it us. Is working and... out, mate? Well, she, well, you know, <laughs> you'd hope so. Uh, I'll let you on a secret. We definitely had a few arguments on the way here. Oh, look, we. Uh... She was holding a grudge against me from the weekend that came to work. So it all. Yeah, it that... all you bring it to work, but it's yeah. how you manage it out is what we've started. Talk, like we've started talking more it's mm. what we never used to do no i'm and very good at holding grudges yeah yes. she's fucking hates my guts for a week and <laughs> it just disappears is how it used to work now it's two days and then we talk about it so yes only two days from seven days is look mate great. You so, do you, weekend <laughs> drinking. Do you, so do you know what pisses came up well oh, going yes. on a a uh, weekend bender twice in a row and well that, i'm uh, sick in bed <laughs> that, to do that with the children. no but like work work wise like what what do you do at work that pisses <laughs> uh, well i'm hopeless on computers so yeah i'm asking her for anything and everything i deleted oh, all my emails two days ago so that's because he transfers them into the archive folder and then all of a sudden it's my problem he he is I'm sure there's lots. He, <laughs> this he, is a can of worms. He will learn the bare minimum. <laughs> so we we use um Plan Swift for our to measure our quotes, uh, our plans and um so he will learn the bare minimum of what he has to and then everything else is everyone else's problem. So that's what grinds my gears. You need so, to be using quotes, mate. I I built it for tradies, so it's easy to use. I can use it. Anybody can use it. I think this is our next step. Learning new uh, things is not my fault. But you're, um, yes. Well, That's going to be a two-week battle and yeah. fight. That, that I, means <laughs> I have to download it, subscribe, and then I'll probably have to sit through all the training that you've got, and then I'll be like, Chris, you have to sit down and learn this. Why, the, why do I have to do this? See, there's the voice I was That's, talking to you about. It's uh, <laughs> I'm like, why the fuck do I sound like that? <laughs> It's, uh, look, that's exactly me. And look, it's just tradies. This is what tradies oh, do. Bang my look, head yeah. against the wall, Italia. It's not my fault. Oh, it's totally your fault. I'm getting better. Like I, but that's, it's the same thing that pisses Camille off. Yeah. Like I, whereas I've learnt now, like I have to put in the effort. I've got to yeah. try and use things. I've got to try and figure things out. But um, like the few things that piss Camille off is I... Like, she's got a massive amount on a plate, but, like, I'll quite often finish a site meeting or jump in my truck and give her a call and say, hey, can you do this, this, and this? And, like, so now she starts, she pushes back. She's like, I've already got too much to do. Like, you can yes. do that yourself. Yes. Go, and, girl. I love this. But I've – and I've had to sort of put my hand on and go, well, yeah, she has got a lot on. Like, I, do, I can do this shit myself. So he will walk into my <laughs> office now. He'll be on the phone to someone or he'll just walk in and start talking. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, respect my boundaries. I'm knee deep in this thing that I've been going through for an hour. I need to punch it out because I've got another meeting coming in five minutes time. Book it in my calendar, mate, because this is how I need to roll these days because you do mate, not respect my time. I think her and Camille have been talking because that's mm. exactly what Camille says now. Mm. Like, is it in the calendar? Put it in the calendar. Mm. I don't oh. enjoy this chat. Oh. I, I thought it was going to be all in my favour. <laughs> oh. I thought I was going to throw your hair under the bus. Or it's walking in and just starts talking. And I'm like, okay, let me stop what I'm doing to then put all my attention on you to then have to go back and rehash what I just had my head in 20 minutes ago and then take another 20 minutes to learn what I was just important. reading. Yeah. Not very important. What's well, for lunch? Uh, it's hilarious. It's the exact same things. I do the same things. But um, it's 
Your turn now. Like, do you know what pisses Chris off? <laughs> yeah, what pisses me off? Oh, he's he's so relaxed and chilled. And <laughs> well, it's got to be a two way street. There's got to be a. Uh, look, he 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 definitely bites back. So I, as I said before, I can be a very stubborn Dutch woman, and I think I am always right, and I um, don't always like to admit that I'm wrong. Um, and I very much so have had to learn to accept that I may be wrong sometimes. He he, he struggles. We got it on record now, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did she just say she's wrong? <laughs> Did you yeah. hear that? Anyone else? Yeah. We do the same thing. We do the same thing. Yeah. So anyway, learning curve for me. That's why you uh, work on yourself. <laughs> um, it's uh, no. At the end of the day, it's it's just one of those that. I know what pisses him off, so I manipulate the situation to get my way. But we won't tell him that one, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it is, look, at the end of the day, it is, like, being a husband and wife in business is challenging. Oh, yeah. And you've got to, um, the most important thing is that you can't let the business come between the relationship. Mm. And sometimes you just really got to learn how to come mm. up with solutions that gets rid of that and leaves it at work. Yeah. The, um, I think... Like you guys, I saw you comment on my picture yesterday. So you guys, are you both going to <laughs> yeah. Johannes's? Snow expedition. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. We, got, um, we got asked, what are you doing to challenge yourself? And we were both, um, we were both in a really bad state of mind um, that week. And we, um, we got home that weekend. Oh, we had to cancel our plans because what happened? Did you have COVID? No. No, it was that Melbourne thing we were meant to go to. Oh, yeah. We were meant to go... <laughs> Um, this award ceremony that turns out we did a full sweep and won all these awards and we couldn't even bloody go yeah because she had COVID yeah and that yeah. was my fault yeah <laughs> anyway <was> fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I, I was digging out a hole out of that for a long time yeah and it still gets we had a up. huge hu- it was very exciting our first you know husband wife trip away for a long time and uh, anyway didn't get to go but so we got asked that week what are you doing to challenge yourself and then That popped up randomly and I'm like, oh, I saw Dwayne did this. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And then um, then Chris from CMA. Do you know what it is? Yeah, yeah, like, aren't we walking fucking with no. undies in the yeah. snow? And yeah, the, that, I think that weekend bath. for his birthday, I bought him an ice bath, like just a very cheap to spoke, um, blow up one. And uh, we did our first ice bath that weekend. Yeah, so it we... was 40, it didn't count. It was 40 degrees with three bags of ice. I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is a cold bath. <laughs> like, our kids go We, we got too cocky and, kid... and uh, booked it too spontaneously. And now, uh, now we're going to be going to training next year. <laughs> Yet. So <laughs> it's, look, that is a. Uh, so Johannes is doing um, a lot of stuff with our um, live like build business now, and he, he's an incredible uh, human being. But you'll get so much out of that weekend. Mm. Like it's, even with what we're just talking about now, like he does this incredible exercise where he demonstrates. Like he's got like a green, orange, and a red zone that you're in, and does an incredible job of illustrating and showing a diagram of what states you get in and how you get back to your green zone so you can leave all your shit behind at work every day and not take it to home but Mm. um if you haven't done it i will i would definitely be recommending trying a couple of real ice baths before you go on that trip so (laughs) you can't even have a cold shower (laughs) uh, look i will get in the zone i will i will do it and i won't complain (laughs) but um you know, our, our honeymoon, we we trekked up to bloody the top of Mount Kinabalu and then all of a sudden he's borrowing my beanie and my gloves and my track pants <laughs> and, you know, like, and I've got no complaints. I, I, I'm sweet. But, yeah. uh, you know, it, he talks like, talk. All I can say is make the most of the weekend. Like, yeah. it, is, yeah. it is incredible. The food's incredible. The, the accommodation. The um, So you're going to the Snowy Mountains, is that mm. the one you're doing? Mm. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. It's booking that sort of stuff that brings you away from the business and brings you back, yeah. I think. Yeah. Oh, mate, and, if, and just do your best to get in the zone. So have, have you, do you, do, do you know Chris from CMA, do you? Yeah. No. Well, it turns yeah. out we, um, so we randomly um, were finalists for the on Brisbane well, Entrepreneur Awards. Well, at his table awards. and I was we're too scared like... to go talk to him. I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, I was like, I, we didn't even know we, who he yeah, was, we... but he, he was super, super nervous because he'd won so many years prior, which... 
fair enough. Um, but we had a couple between us. So, and, and we didn't know what we were doing there. We were just like, this is cool. Like, Fuck you know, sure, to, to be up in this league, like, like how did we oh, get here? Idiot. It was, yeah, we were a bit like uh, out of our zone, you know, a couple of trades. But um, you never had your zone. You got it like. We embraced. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we embraced. Wine helps. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's. Um, yeah, it was just coincidental. So, yeah. Did you it's... do it with him, did you? Yeah, or... so he came. Um, I had only met him a couple of times uh, prior to that, but um, yeah, he's a he's a really, really cool guy. Yeah, but right. um, yeah, no, we, I've got a group of mates that um, we try and challenge ourselves each year. Like we did Everest six years ago. Yeah, right. And then um, I've told the story a few times on this podcast, but like one of the guys, Trent, he knows I've been getting into the ice baths and the breathing and the self-improvement over the last couple of years and he sort of takes the piss a lot and he actually he just sent me a link one like random link one day and said hey um this is the one for this year I've booked it and I was like sweet like I I, I didn't book it but I texted him back and said yeah sweet I've booked it and then he straight on the phone to me oh I was just taking the piss I hadn't booked it <laughs> well, we have to book it now because we, we're going so um I try to do that for uh Brett from Saltash Homes. He's like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, I think I've given you too much time to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, you got to do it. It's it's an incredible weekend. But look, we went down there and, um, uh, well, four of my mates had never done anything like that before. They they went and had a couple of trial ice baths before we went. But um, two of them were the biggest skeptics you could ever imagine, and they. Uh, yeah, put it this way, by the end of the weekend, there was a lot of lot of tears, a lot of hugging and a lot of emotion going around and they, uh, they've they come back and now they, now they do the ice baths and that fairly regularly and do the breath work and stuff. So That's awesome. you got to get in the zone, but yeah, I don't want to tell you too much because, uh, yeah, it's, but it, it's, it's unreal. Yeah, that's wicked. We, um, our goal at the moment is to buy a big proper ice bath for home, but we need to get over a few challenges first, but that's our definite next little congratulations moment <laughs> we'll see how we go <laughs> so what, what, what do, you, do you do anything chris to like get it get in like what's your what's your escape from uh work? used to be running but that's gone to shit since yeah about six months i need to get back into it go to the gym three times a week but going with my mum who's 60 so I'm not exactly pushing myself like <laughs> but yeah it's pretty good but yeah need to get back into running yeah and we got the sauna at home which is like the best investment I reckon we've ever done so. yeah I've heard we're, we've been well Shay's got one um done a bit of that lately and been thinking about buying one so you, you got a, like the proper one not the infrared one and... no infrared one yeah um and so, it, like you yeah, use it regularly three three four times a week definitely on a hangover that's uh, <laughs> yeah the hangover helps that's actually a, you do sweat it out a lot that's yes. a game changer <laughs> yeah that sweat's a bit stinky after that one yeah yes. they're 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 good man like you reset and you good yeah. and feel good afterwards so yeah. pretty yeah. quickly Cold shower so. afterwards so what do you do you guys do anything with your team for self-improvement or do you give them the opportunity um self-improvement yeah we we, we've we've tried i guess it's a hard one in terms of their personalities we've had a lot of pushback um and trying to find that sweet spot of what they're willing to do I suggested the ice baths at our warehouse and he's like no one's gonna do that my battle is i come up with these ideas and then i get you know push yeah. down very quickly so it's um it's one of those that we're just we're trying to find that sweet spot we we're doing monthly barbecues in the morning just for breakfast and yeah doing all that sort but we yeah we need to get something like that to get the team back together because we've had a few changes and a lot of new guys so we need to work something out decent like that yeah. Fucking yeah. Don't know if I'm taking them to the snowy mountains. <laughs> no, well, it doesn't. Happening. There's heaps of things. Like we, I think it's something that's always a little bit tricky because you, you're always going to have a couple of members of your team that aren't on board or whatever. Mm. So like, I just give them the option now. Like if yeah. you want to, if you want to be involved, you can. If you don't, you don't. But yeah. um, I think they've seen enough. Like there's been, there's a couple of guys that have sat out on a couple of things, and I think now they start to see the rest of the team trying new things so that mm. like the last few things we've done everyone has done it so mm, 
That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. It's something you just got to work on and yeah, and keep growing. On, I we think, we constantly evolve in that regard. So Christmas parties are, are different every year. Trying to find that perfect, you know, do we include family? Do we include partners? Do you guys just want to get, you know, boozed up together? Do you, whatever it might be. It's um, we've taken our staff to Strati a few times. Some appreciate it, some don't. Um, awards nights, we even booked two huge tables this year at awards. Some came, some didn't. Yeah. You know, some want to dress up, some don't. That's okay. Yeah. Um, it's one of those that we um, we constantly look at different ways to do things across our whole business. Yeah. Do you um, ask your team what they want to do? They don't, they, <laughs> they it's do, they so just, hard to squeeze it out of them. They, they yeah. sit there quiet. That's, that's where we... Get, we we don't know how to, yeah. It's hard. Like we yeah. we're the same. Like we we're constantly asking. Like give us ideas. Tell us new things you want to try. Like I ended up doing up this massive list last year, and man, I had everything on it. Like bloody free diving, snorkeling, skydiving, drag. Like I put yeah, everything. I'll on go it. free diving. And, um, <laughs> and I put it out head. to them, and like we we got a few suggestions back, which we've done a lot of them this year, but. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know why that is. Like, I, I don't know why. Yeah, we get they... crickets for every meeting. Yeah. Yeah, it's um... maybe send them out a email. They can. We've been doing um, individual Do reviews in recently, and that's helped a lot. We've got a lot of out out of our teams. So What's so, that? Um, one-on-one reviews. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, that's helped significantly. So just because they actually talk. Yeah. Um, they're not yeah. scared about what everyone else is going to think about them, and they're not yeah. scared of you know, putting their foot in it in front of others and making an embarrassment out of themselves. And yeah, so we've, we've taken a lot of feedback on board in that regard, but they all just like, our, our biggest thing for our company is getting, is putting your family first. So we, as much as we want to help improve them, we obviously want them to find time with their families. And some have taken it to the absolute 10th degree like right up there and others are just like yeah whatever i'll, I'll, yeah. I'll come along to everything yeah so it's i don't know the ones that we come up with these ideas it seems to be the same people that come along and that's cool but then we're building this resentment from others because they get jealous yeah. i think yeah it's, they'll come eventually and yeah just keep inviting i guess it's and definitely the one of the hardest parts of a business i think like absolutely just, every, everyone's different personalities yeah. opinions all those types of things like yeah um and then it gets even harder when you put a bit of booze in the mix and yeah 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 we that um, goes one way or the other yeah yeah best mates for life or yeah, yeah. oh well quitting tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, the um we recently did a really really good session it's the best team building thing we've ever done with um helen rodinson from um leadership eq um i would highly recommend trying that so she does it with horses um just out at mount samson like it's unbelievable we got the best feedback from well all of our team showed up and every single one of them gave us feedback and it was a yeah by far the best thing we've ever done and i definitely didn't think it was something that most of them would have even been interested in showing up too, but it's a great idea. It, um, yeah, it turned out to be really, really good. He said it, so you should agree now. <laughs> yeah, I'm liking the ice bath, but yeah. <laughs> it wasn't riding the horses, that comes you don't to even us. get on the horse. It's all just about it's actually using your breathe. A lot of it is using your breathing to interact with the horse. That's awesome. So, horses are one of the best judges of character, and uh, yeah, so um, yeah, it's very interesting. A friend of ours uses, um, she's in a charity for horses to help children calming down and whatnot. It's, um, it's beautiful. It's, yeah. 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 The horse whisperer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll um, look, really appreciate you guys coming in today. And um, before we wrap it up, but like, give us, well, Kim, your top three things for uh, working successfully together. Communication. Be open, open-minded and uh, be willing to adapt. All right. Yeah. What's yours, Chris? Have it out. Like, don't let it bottle up have that argument um try to chew silently (laughs) (laughs) i get a feeling this is a big issue for a lot of people (laughs) and don't have a desk so close to each other respect (laughs) each other's space (laughs) yeah it's been a pleasure having you guys on and look i think you've given some really good uh insights into what it's like for couples to work together and there'll be a lot of couples out there or a lot of people listening to this thing and holy shit like that's us so 
that's um that's what this podcast is all about yeah. telling stories and just telling it how it is real life shit so yeah. uh appreciate you being a bit vulnerable today and sharing your story and hopefully uh, keep smashing some goals yeah looking forward to it thanks for having us thank you yeah cheers guys are you ready to build smarter live better and enjoy life then head over to livelifebuild.com forward slash elevate to get started Everything discussed during the Level Up podcast with me, Dwayne Pierce, is based solely on my own personal experiences and those experiences of my guests. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. We recommend that you obtain your own professional advice in respect to the topics discussed during this podcast.